Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. The Bible declares in the Gospel of Luke, the 10th chapter and the 19th verse, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. I've taken four of quick subject matter tonight. You got the power. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for the reminder in your word. The reminder that you have given us authority over evil, Father. You have given us authority over our lives, Father God. You have given us the ability to trample over serpents, to keep the devil under our feet where he belongs. And so, Father, I pray, God, as I speak your word, that it would go forth in power and clarity, God, that your people my Lord, uh, would be awakened to your word, Father God, uh, that it would come alive in their spirits, God, uh, that they would know who they are in Christ Jesus tonight, Father God. So I pray, Father, that you would lead me by your spirit so that your people would be edified and you, my Lord, would be glorified. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of mine heart, God, let it be acceptable in thy spirit. Sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray and I ask these things in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. Back in the 90s, there was this group that um, originated from Germany. They had this song out called, I Got the Power. And if you look at the video, millions of people have looked at that video. And if you look at it real closely, the guy that was rapping, that was standing behind a podium, looked like a pulpit. And on that pulpit in the front of it was a demonic picture of someone looking real evil. And if you read deep into what they're talking about, they're talking about they had the power over the world. But I beg tonight to differ with them. The Bible declares uh, that God has given his children the authority. He's given us the power over serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And he has declared to us tonight uh, that nothing shall by any means hurt us. So why did God say this in the text? Well, if you go to the Gospel of Luke, the 10th chapter, and if you read it real closely, the Bible lets us know that Jesus put together a group of 70 men and he declared that they should go out two by two to Judea. And the reason he was sending them to Judea, because he was going to come shortly. He told them, hallelujah, to he gave them specific instructions on what to do and what not to do. He told them that, you know, the harvest was plenty, but the laborers are few. And if we think about that, even today, the harvest is still plentiful, but are there laborers that are willing to go out, that are willing to endure, that are willing to stand against evil? Because when you go out in the name of Jesus, that's when the enemy is going to send out, you know, all of his little people to try to stop you from doing the will of God. He's going to work through men and women, evil men and women, I should say. He's going to put all kinds of distractions in your way because the Bible lets us know that in this text and again I want you to read it in your meditation time. He told them, you know, don't even stop and salute men. And what he was saying in the custom, in Jewish custom, their salutations were real long. So that could end up being, you know, something to distract them. So he said, don't even get distracted by people. And when you go out, don't be going from house to house, you know, talking to people. When you are on assignment, in other words, you have have to be real careful where you go. You have to be real careful who you keep company with. Ah, Robosita, I came tonight to let somebody know everybody not your friend. Everybody does not mean you well. The devil will use whomever he can to try to stop you, to get you off task so that you will not fulfill the purposes of God in your life. I want you to know my brother and my sister 
sister, if God has called you, you have the power. It is time that we as the children of God uh, begin to walk in the kingdom authority uh, that we have been given. Today is a new day. We're going to take authority over all of the evil spirits that have been sent against us uh, to hinder our walk, uh, to hinder our children, uh, to hinder our finances, uh, to hinder our, hallelujah, our jobs, uh, to hinder our future. Uh, we take authority in the mighty name of Jesus because when you take authority in the name of Jesus, no devil can stand against our risen Savior. Jesus came down here from heaven. He came down here. He gave his life, hallelujah, for the sins of the world. And you know what? Because he's given his life for the sins of the world, he is the one who holds the keys. Jesus said in the book of Revelations, the first chapter and the 18th verse, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Jesus is in control of it all. Hallelujah. He has defeated our enemy. What does it say over in the book of Genesis? It is where God, in the book of Genesis, the third chapter and the 15th verse, where he said, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The devil belongs underneath our feet. He is defeated by the blood of Jesus Christ. Ha, hey, when Jesus went to Calvary and they hung our Savior on the cross. Ha, but the Bible lets us know ha, they took him down from the cross. Ha, they laid him in a borrowed tomb. Ha, but three days later, ha, the Bible declares ha, our Savior got up. Ha, he rose from the dead. Ha, and because he has risen, hallelujah, we are victorious victorious because of what has been done. So I declare to you tonight real quickly, take authority. Take back what the devil has stolen. Take back the time that the devil has stolen. God is saying unto you right now, he's saying that he's going to restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, the locusts and all of those that have risen up against you, that have tried to stop your progress. Get ready for a turnaround. Hallelujah. Get ready for a new day because why? We have the power. We have the power. Hallelujah. And why do we have the power? In the book of Acts, huh? he said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You are in the victorious kingdom of God. Come on up a little higher tonight and let's begin to take back what the devil has stolen from us. Hallelujah. Bible declares, behold, I give you the authority to trample over serpents and over demons and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We have the power in Jesus name. I want to remind you today that God loves you. I love you. I'm praying for you. And until we meet again, stay strong and keep your eyes on Jesus. God bless you. Opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, 
sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was God's sacrificial lamb, because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3, 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your sins. Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10, 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.